What's up, folks? It is Jafer. Ninjutsu hit us with an awesome mouse earlier this year in the Origin 1X. It was a revamped, you know, gaming-centric package of really the current specs of today in the IntelliMouse Pro shape. And now with their latest mouse, the Katana Ultralight, it proves that they are not done settling on just one revamp. The Katana Ultralight is going to run you a cool $59.99, a price point no one will have any complaints about. It's measuring in at 125 by 60 and a half at its grip width and 39 millimeters high. It's no small mouse, but it only weighs 58 grams, which is impressive at that size. Comparatively, it's the same length as the G Pro Wireless, but definitely wider at that grip width. The buttons help handle the mouse as its sides are flat and it slopes up toward the middle as it goes upward. And so it definitely helps almost like kind of catch your finger if you do have to lift the mouse. The left side is missing any indention or dimple. So if you go to lift off the mouse or pick it up, it might be a little slippery, unlike the bump that's found on the G Pro Wireless. I found myself often digging my ring and pinky fingers into the body's separation line at the bottom just to maintain stability if I did have to lift the mouse. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something that I did notice during my playtime. Gone is a matte finish that was an oil magnet on the Origin 1X and in place is still matte, but it's more of your traditional style ABS plastic surface with a little bit of abrasiveness to it, so it does offer good grip. The curvature of the katana allows my hand size of 19 by 10 centimeters to use this in a claw or a fingertip or even a palm comfortably and it does help because of the positioning of the side buttons. Uh, it does not have a, a hump that's going to prevent you to use a certain grip style of your choosing. You know the G Pro Wireless or Super Light definitely had more of a rear hump toward the back here whereas this is more of a safer slope. Uh, it's almost reminiscent of the FK but this is much taller than the FK. Minimal pre-travel on mouse one and two, but there's definitely some excessive post-travel noticeable by the eye and feel. Not so much the case on the side buttons though, as my copy sides are snappy and they do feel great in use. The scroll wheel is comfortable to use with clearly defined steps, which is definitely something that I always appreciate if you've watched my previous videos. The main clicks are gonna be your KLGM 8.0, an industry standard at this point, they're strong, crispy, durable switches. Here's a sound test. Given its size with that 58 gram weight, you would think they had some compromises made to make it weigh that low. And honestly, I can't find any at all. There is very, very minimal flexing on the sides and you gotta crank down on it. Uh, there is nothing in here that's rattly or loose. It is very, very solid. There is optional software for the Katana. What's adjustable is the polling rate and DPI buttons under the mouse. And that is gonna be sandwiching that PMW3389 sensor. Out of the box, it's defaulted at one millimeters and it felt great that way. No problematic lift off distance issues noticed in my gaming. If you do want to adjust the LOD, debounce, or even adjust your profiles, you'll want to refer to that optional software then. While we're under the mouse, we do have 100% PTFE feet. They're calling the version two assassin feet. They're super smooth and quiet with two large surface areas that are very reminiscent to a Zowie mouse. And then you do have one ring right around the sensor. They are thin and close to the body, helping with that low lift off distance of the sensor. Sticking to the theme, it's out of the box cable is called the Assassin Paracord. The stress relief is angled upward to help on drag. Unfortunately, the drag isn't my issue. It's the cable itself. While it is considered a lightweight by industry standards, it's not as flexible as the competition. The cable lacks a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of memory found within the ground wire in the cable. And that's something that you're gonna notice when you have a mouse as lightweight as 58 grams. It's serviceable with the bungee, but in the days of amazing wireless options, including the Origin 1X, you can't make mistakes like this on a cable. My time spent with the Katana was really fun. I didn't notice anything that was really going to be an impedance on me when I was gaming outside of the cable. Um, it felt really great to use. I didn't notice any cramping. There was no discomfort with using this shape at all. And it's definitely one that uh, I could see myself using a lot more. 
In the end, the Katana is just like the Origin 1X in that it's a great mouse with some minor complaints. And I love their mission though of continuously bringing old classic shapes to the current times with updated specs. And not just updated specs, but they're also just keeping with the trend of maintaining an awesome lightweight option. And if they're listening, I would say skip out on maybe re-releasing it with a better cable, which normally would be a great option. I would say go straight to the wireless option because I feel they could probably add a wireless receiver to this and still maintain right around 65 five grams which would be awesome as well as maintain that awesome ninjutsu price point so if you did like the video please throw a like and hit that subscription button and if you do want to grab one of these mice yourself there will be a link in the description below and it does help the channel if you end up buying through that other than that though i am jafer you guys stay safe